Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy and today we're going to be doing some sticker repair work on these vintage Takara Penny Racers. Now Penny Racers are some really cool toys that I've talked about quite a few times on my channel. I don't think there are that many people out there who actually collect them bar me but I really do like them. They're these cool little pullback toys so you put them on the ground and pull them back to wind up the motor and then by putting a penny in this little back slot here it would cause them to do wheelies and all sorts of little stunts. They were sort of cheap toys that you could buy in the early to mid 80s and they're based on a Japanese toy line called Choro Q. Uh, basically they took that line, rebranded it a bit and then sold it in the UK and US and they come in all ranges of uh, different cars and as you can see I've got quite a few here. This is actually my entire collection of penny racers. They don't turn up that often because I think most people don't really know what they are but when they do I always try and grab them and uh, as you can see this is what I've managed to grab so far. But the three at the front uh, have uh, stickers missing so I thought to Today I would take the time to sort of recreate those stickers from scratch and get these three looking as good as they can. Now the two uh, on the left here, these are ones I've grabbed off eBay. Uh, these are fairly cheap. You, people do try and sell them for sort of large amounts of money but really they go for a couple of pounds each. Uh, when they are listed for high prices they sit on eBay forever. Nobody bothers picking up. So this was the first one I picked up and as you can see it's not actually in bad condition. It's missing the sticker on the front and it's missing the sticker on the back and doing a lot of research on Online, I've managed to find some images of uh, what's missing on the front and I have an image of the back sticker but I can't read the name so I'm actually going to be making up a name for this one. All of these penny racers have different names so this one for my purposes is going to be called Lucky 7 because the little emblem on the side is a number 7 but I'm sure it probably originally had a different name so if anyone does know the name of that one uh, do let me know and I'll sort of update the graphic that I'm going to make shortly. Uh, then this one in the middle I still have the sticker on the back so you can see this one's called Stargazer but it's supposed to have more stickers on the side. It's actually supposed to have a little uh, surfboard on the top here but that has snapped off and uh, it's long gone so I'm just going to worry about sort of fixing the stickers on this just to make it look quite nice. And then this last one was very recently sent to me by Andy from the uh, Hollow Chronicles podcast. Uh, I think this was his childhood one because it's had quite a lot of uh, sort of wear to it. You can see it's missing part of the bumper here uh, but it's also missing the stickers that should be on the side. On the back you can just about make out the sticker. That does actually say surf and turf on it and sometimes knowing the name of a penny racer uh, helps you in sort of restoring it because just by looking up surf and turf I found someone else had one of these and posted some pictures of it so I've been able to use that to make the new stickers and I've done stickers on these quite a few times before actually if you go to toyploy.com you'll see a couple of sets of stickers I've made previously. Uh, one for this one which is called Buggy Bunny which was another penny racer I found a few years back that didn't have the stickers. I was just lucky enough to find someone with photos of it and I then recreated those and then I've also made stickers for this one which is a Moonbeam Mover. This is a glow in the dark little van and uh, it comes in all sorts of different colours but I made the stickers for this. I think right early on back when I started up uh, the Toyploy uh, channel I made the stickers for this one. So that one's uh, been uh, sort of with reproduction stickers all those years and it's still looking really nice. But anyway today what I want to do is make new stickers for these. So uh, what I generally do is I take photos of the toys uh, where I need to sort of add stickers to it. So on this one I've taken a as flat an image as I can of the front so that I've got a sort of a rough idea of what uh, shape it needs to be. I then take very careful measurements of all the panels as well and I can take those into Photoshop and then using the images I've sort of sourced online I can make some recreation stickers. So let's watch that process.
So as you can see, the process is fairly time consuming because you're working on some quite small images and often I have to sort of recreate the whole little bit of graphic from scratch. Sometimes they're fairly straightforward, you know, and, and a quick thing to do. Uh, the Stargazer one was probably the quickest to do because actually the graphics on the side are fairly simple. And I was able to sort of use a photograph of my original one here and remake the little logo on the back quite quickly. Uh, if I didn't have this sort of good version of it here that I could copy, I would have uh, made that completely from scratch. But in this instance, that was the quickest one to do. And then on the, the uh, surf and turf one, that's a little bit more complicated just because of the sort of the strange shapes that uh, are needed to get these little stickers to go on the sides of the doors. And then I did decide to completely recreate this uh, logo on the back because you can barely read the one that's on this one. So I made that one from scratch as well. So you can see that nice uh, new version there does say surf and turf. And then this one is the one that I've had to make up as I say, because uh, I just wasn't sure of uh, what the name on the back of it says. The image I've got is just a sort of blue smudge that looks like the sticker has been sort of worn away so I've called it Lucky 7. As I say if you actually do know what this one is called then let me know and I will uh, update the file but for now this is what I've made and you can see these are my printouts this is onto some sticky backed glossy printer paper and I had various errors while printing these things out this one got caught in the printer so it's actually scuffed one of the uh, prints that's why I printed it again and then this when I first tried to print it it printed in black and white which again sometimes happens so uh, I've uh, printed that one on twice. With all of my stickers they will be free on toyploy.com so if you do happen to collect any of these penny racers you can grab these files and, and as I mentioned there are stickers for a couple of other penny racers there. Now these all need to be cut out and uh, stuck on and they are pretty small. You can see I've put a grey line around the edge of it. You need to remove the grey line from all of my stickers when you print them because you're just aiming to get the bit in the middle. I am going to be cutting these out using the scissors on my handy Swiss army knife and then applying them with a pair of tweezers. If I do have original stickers on these I will leave them even if they're quite worn I prefer to leave the original one so on this I'm just going to be replacing the front and the back and likewise this one even though the back sticker is in a terrible state I'm going to leave that as is but uh, let's get all the stickers on and you'll see what a difference it makes to uh, how these look. I think they look great little vehicles as is but the stickers really do make them look something special so let's get them cut out and stuck on. And here they are with the, the new stickers added. So this is the first one. This is Lucky 7 as I'm calling it. Um, so it's got a new sticker on the bonnet and the new sort of little logo sticker on the back, which if I do ever find out the name for this, I will update with the, the proper logo. But for now, that looks really quite nice. And I've left the original stickers on the side just because I think they look quite nice and worn. And then here we have, this is the Stargazer. So this has the original sticker on the back and I've just added these stripes on the side. And the reason it's nice to have these stripes is all of these glowing in the dark.
dark ones have the same sort of patterning. So I'll bring in one of the other ones. You can see they have this same sort of striping going on. Uh, I'll get, grab another one from the back here. So you can see it all sort of matches and without those, it just looks a little bit odd. So it's nice to sort of finally finish that one off. And then the final one is the one that uh, Andy sent me. And as you can see, these were incredibly tiny stickers. In fact, the hardest ones to cut out by a long way because they're very small and very thin, but uh, I've managed to get those on. And it just adds that final little bit of detail to this sort of uh, beach buggy type thing. And again, I've left the original one on the back there. You can barely read that and probably I should have taken that off and put the new one on, but it's just nice to keep something original on it. So overall now, we've got uh, three very good looking little penny racers. I really enjoy doing little uh, projects like this because it's a fairly simple thing to do, although it actually does take quite a long time to track down images of the toys I want to sort of repair and then work out what the stickers need to be. But that's part of the fun is that sort of hunt, even just to find images of other people's penny racers in their collection so that I can get these looking as nice as I want them to. And then with some time spent in Photoshop sort of redesigning the uh, stickers, you can end up with something that looks really quite nice and is really very displayable again. Now I'm sure this video is not of interest to many of the people who watch my channel normally but as I say I really do like these as a thing to collect and uh, because nobody particularly collects them they're quite cheap if you can find them but they are a good thing to hunt for because they don't come up that often so I've been collecting these for I don't know five or six years now and this is my entire collection so it's quite a slow process to build them up but it's a really fun project and a really sort of fun thing to collect. So I hope overall you have actually enjoyed this video just to see these things uh, restored it's always nice to see a little toy fixed up and mended. If you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I up a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram.